Let us pray today for all of those who work and volunteer in the Red Cross, which is the Western version, and the Red Crescent, which is the Eastern version. Let us pray for those people who work in these meritorious institutions. May the Lord bless their work that does so much and so good for so many people. Our lesson for reflection today is on Jesus as the Consoler. Consolation can come in many forms, genuine, formal, and even inauthentic. However, Jesus' way of consoling us in times of difficulty is different. It takes three distinct forms, nearness, truth, and hope. The consolation of Jesus is always close, never distant. God drew near to us in the Incarnation. When Jesus consoles, he does not use empty words. He says to us, I am here, I am with you. The force of his presence and his closeness speaks to us even though it is silent. Jesus did not hide the truth from his disciples. He let them know that his death was near. Later, in our today's gospel, he let them know that soon he would leave them to go to the Father. However, Jesus spoke the truth gently, without seeking to hurt his disciples. He did not add drama. He just spoke it and then consoled them. Jesus speaks the truth because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus consoled his disciples and restored their hope. He said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. I am going to prepare a place for you. I know I have no idea why that breaks me up so much this year. Jesus goes ahead of us to open the doors of heaven for all of us. As Jesus reassures his disciples that he will come back to take them with him, so he will also come back to take us. Jesus does not promise that we will not suffer, but rather that when we do, he will be close to us, to console us. It is not easy to allow ourselves to be consoled by the Lord. In bad times, we may become angry with God, and we do not allow him to console us. Pray that we might allow ourselves to be consoled by the Lord. His consolation is nearness. He is truth, and he opens the doors. Of hope. Now I'm going to go right into the second, the Beatitudes. This is the last of the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Pope Francis focuses on the final Beatitude. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, today we conclude our catechesis on the Beatitudes with the final Beatitude. All the Beatitudes, all the attitudes contained in the Beatitudes, when lived for Christ, can lead to oppression by the world. Yet, ultimately, this persecution is a cause of joy in heaven. The way of the Beatitudes is an Easter path, leading us from selfishness to a life guided by the Spirit. We see this in the saints, who show that the experience of persecution can set the Christian free from worldly compromise. Tragically, today, many of our brothers and sisters still face persecution, and we express our closeness to them. May we, too, always remain salt of the earth, 
lest by losing the taste of the gospel we lead others to disdain it too. By God's grace, whatever trials we do face can draw us to become more like Christ, who leads us to a new life. In this manner, following the humble way of the Beatitudes, we will come to experience the kingdom of heaven, our greatest joy and happiness. In the joy of the risen Christ, I invoke upon you and your families the loving mercy of God our Father. May the Lord bless all of you. And that is the end of our Beatitudes lessons. Peace be with you.